Hi, it's Richard Dwyer. Keeping it free. Blogspot.com. RichardDwyer.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. In my opinion, and it's one man's opinion, we'll see what the news reveals in the next few days. But in my opinion, this story of mother Rita Mays being abducted by a man wearing a black hoodie, right? And then calling her daughter after the man overpowers her, places her in the trunk of her car, and then drives away in her car with her in the trunk of her car, right? This story that Rita Mays was abducted was transported more than 300 miles and then was killed, right, by the abductor after she was hostage in the trunk of her car. In my opinion, this story is false, right? I don't believe Miss Mays was abducted. Let's go through it, right? Because there's certain facts that are troubling. Make no mistake, Rita Mays dies, right? She's found in the trunk of her car at Spokane International Airport. Right, more than 300 miles away from Helena, Montana, where she was supposed to be. Right, and her body is found in the trunk with a 9mm handgun and two spent shell casings. Her torso has been shot in the chest. Right, here's the problem, and it's a big problem. It's why I don't believe the cops ever arrest anyone for this alleged crime, right? First, it's the scene of the alleged crime, right? There's a purse that Miss Mays had that contained $50 in it, and it's on the passenger side of the floorboard, right, in the locked car. In other words, why would the perpetrator not at least take the money out of the purse? Wouldn't robbery be the motive for this? If it is, then why didn't the alleged abductor take the money? Right? There's an iPad found on the rear floorboard of the car. Well, here again, why wouldn't the perp take something valuable? He's gone to the trouble of placing her in the trunk of the car. Why wouldn't he take the iPad, right? Well, we're finding out now, because the cops know they found the body with a gun. We're finding out that Rita Mays carried a gun, right? Think about it. She carried a gun with her. Now, the cops aren't talking too much about the case, although they've publicly expressed some doubts. Well, it sounds to me like the gun in the trunk of the car was Rita Mays' gun. Right? Because if the gun were some other gun, right, some unregistered gun from someplace else, it seems to me the cops would be more enthusiastic about investigating this high-profile crime than they are. So the gun in the trunk, just given the lack of enthusiasm by the police in investigating this crime, I believe the gun in the trunk is likely Rita Mays's gun. Let me point out, too, that Rita Mays' credit card is used at two different stores between Helena, Montana and Spokane International Airport, where the car is found. Now, these stores apparently have some surveillance tape. 
Now you can imagine if Rita Mays comes in with a guy wearing a black hoodie or if someone other than Rita Mays uses her credit card at both stores the cops and the FBI is involved because they cross state lines right the cops would realize that they have a kidnapping on their hands here again though and this story will develop over the next few days the cops have doubts about the story now no one's publicly commented on what's on the surveillance tape but I'm guessing what's on the surveillance tape is Rita Mays using her own credit card right anything other than that would set off alarm bells for the police right she goes missing somebody else is using the credit card right shows up on the surveillance tape you would imagine the police would say whoa whoa what's going on here but that's not what's happening let me go one step further you know you go into a convenience store forget the tape there's a cashier isn't there right I'm guessing police have questioned the people in the convenience store and I'm guessing that they've told the cops yeah she looks familiar she was in here by herself probably the most damning fact right the most damning fact in this entire case and it's the most damning fact is the fact that the 2005 Pontiac Grand Prix that Rita Mays owned so she would know the car better than someone who didn't own it owned and drove had an interior trunk release button so think about it the premise here that she calls her daughter from the trunk of a vehicle that she's locked in that's being driven away by an abductor now we're finding out that she wasn't locked in that trunk she could have opened that trunk we know the car stopped twice right because of the convenience store stoppings right now we're finding out there's a release button in the trunk it's 300 plus miles folks she was in that trunk for some time I'm guessing no matter how dark it was in that trunk sooner or later her eyes would adjust right sooner or later she would realize that hey there's a release button in this trunk right she doesn't let's talk about the call to the daughter now think about it you're in a vehicle it's being driven by someone else who's overpowered you and put you in the trunk of the car right she's on the phone with her daughter supposedly for 10 minutes until the phone goes dead 10 minutes right during that period of time if you're in the trunk and you're afraid you're terrified your phone is dying right because the 10 minute call ends with the phone dying right wouldn't you also be concerned that the guy driving the vehicle might hear you talking in the trunk 10 minutes is a long time right if there's a kidnapper just a few feet away I know you're in a car I know you're supposed to you know be in a closed trunk but if there's a kidnapper just a few feet away, less than a car length away, are you going to talk for 10 minutes on the phone? Just food for thought. So to me, this story doesn't make sense. An officer, by the way, after the, you know, after Rita Mays is reported missing and after her daughter calls police to alert them to the fact that she's received a call from her mother right 
Believe it or not, the police actually call the phone. Someone answers Rita Mays' phone, right? This is what the cops tell us. The officer then hears gunshots, right? Two shell casings are found in the trunk of the vehicle. The officer hears gunshots and then silence. Now, let's think it through. You and I know that if a male voice, some voice other than Rita Mays' voice, answered her phone, the cops would know she was with someone. Then if they heard shots after that, the cops would say, whoa, this is something we need to investigate. But yet the cops have doubts about the entire story. The someone who answered the phone, in my opinion, again, just based on the facts, even though the phone's supposed to have been dead and who knows what the logistics are. But the person who answered the phone is probably Rita Mays herself. Right? You know, judge a case not just by the publicly released facts, but judge a case by the zest in terms of investigating the crime that the cops have. Right? If the cops are low-keying it, if the cops publicly are saying, hey, we have some doubts, if it's been floated that these facts are consistent with a suicide, then one has to wonder why that's even being explored if the gun in the trunk's not hers and the person who picks up her phone is not her. Right? So add it all up. I think the police are being diplomatic here. I think as they investigated this crime, the signs started pointing to 47-year-old Rita Mays killing herself, right? Being in the trunk of a car that she could have gotten out of with her own gun, having several minute conversations with her daughter, right? She also calls her husband. Right? Perhaps this woman has a history of depression, blue thoughts, suicidal thoughts. Whatever is going on here, we the public are not hearing the whole story. Right, just to understand the cops think suicide may have taken place here, but they haven't released the results of their investigation into her stopping at convenience stores. Let's just say it's highly unlikely that the surveillance film show a man with a black hoodie. Right? Let's just guess that the surveillance tapes don't show somebody other than Rita Mays using her credit cards, right? So I have my doubts. I believe what we're going to learn is that this was Rita Mays's way of saying goodbye, right? The keys are in the ignition. I believe that she, you know, pops the trunk, goes into the trunk. Maybe life was too much for her. She calls people she loves, right? She says goodbye to her daughter. The phone rings. It's police. It's time to end it. She does, right? I don't believe she was abducted calling family members from the trunk of a getaway car, right? I understand there was at one point a person of interest that the cops had in the crime, which tells me that the cops investigated the crime. Apparently that person of interest has been ruled out. I think the cops know more right now than they're telling us. I believe out of, you know, a sense of decency and respect for Rita Mays's family, the cops aren't releasing all of the facts that they know so soon after 
this crime has taken place because I believe the cops realize it's a non-crime. There's no one running the streets right now who did this, who killed this woman, right, who put her in a trunk, right? If there were, I don't believe there would have been $50 in cash in the interior of her car. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I'm guessing this YouTube video is going to be up a long time, right? That's YouTube's policy, and that many more facts about this case are going to be released to the public. As those facts are released, please feel free to leave your comments on them in the comment section to this video. Let's have the comment section serve as a narrative for our thoughts on this ongoing case. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.